long ago it was said that one half of the world does not know how the other half lives that was true then it did not know because it did not care the half that was on top cared little for the struggles and less for the fate of those that were underneath so long as it was able to hold them there and keep its own seat there came a time when the discomfort and crowding below were so great and the consequent upheaval so violent that it was no longer an easy thing to do and then the upper half fell to inquiring what was the matter information on the subject has been accumulating rapidly since and the whole world has had its hands full answering for its old ignorance in new york the youngest of the world's great cities that time came later than elsewhere because the crowding had not been so great there were those who believed that it would never come but their hopes were vain greed and reckless selfishness wrought like results here as in the cities of older lands when the great riot occurred in 1863 so reads the testimony of the secretary of the prison association of new york before a legislative committee appointed to investigate causes of the increase of crime in the state twenty-five years ago every hiding place and nursery of crime discovered itself by immediate and active participation in the operations of the mob those very places and domiciles and all that are like them are today nurseries of crime and of the vices and disorderly courses which lead to crime by far the largest part eighty per cent at least of crimes against property and against the person are perpetuated by individuals who have either lost connection with home life or never had any or whose homes had ceased to be sufficiently separate decent and desirable to afford what are regarded as ordinary wholesome influences of home and family the younger criminals seem to come almost exclusively from the worst tenement house districts that is when traced back to the very places where they had had their homes in the city here of one thing new york made sure at that early stage of the inquiry the boundary line of the other half lies through the tenements it is ten years and over now since that line divided new york's population evenly today three-fourths of its people live in the tenements and the nineteenth century drifted the population to the cities ascending ever-increasing multitudes to crowd them the fifteen thousand tenant houses that were the despair of the sanitarian in the past generation have swelled into thirty-seven thousand and more than twelve hundred thousand persons call them home the one way out he saw rapid transit to the suburbs has brought no relief we know now that there is no way out that the system that was the evil offspring of public neglect and private greed has come to stay a storm center forever of our civilization nothing is left but to make the best of a bad bargain what the tenements are and how they grew to what they are we shall see hereafter the story is dark enough drawn from the plain public records to send a chill to any heart if it shall appear that the sufferings and the sins of the other half and the evil they breed are but as a just punishment upon the community that gave it no other choice it will be because that is the truth the boundary line lies there because while the forces for good on one side vastly outweigh the bad it were not well otherwise in the tenements all the influences make for evil because they are the hotbeds of the epidemics that carry death to rich and poor alike the nurseries of pauperism and the crime that fill our jails and police courts that throw off a scum of forty thousand human wrecks to the island asylums and workhouses year by year that turned out in the last eight years around half a million beggars to prey upon our charities that maintain a standing army of ten thousand tramps 
with all that implies because above all they touch the family life with deadly moral contagion this is their worst crime inseparable from the system that we have to own it the child of our own wrong does not excuse it even though it gives it claim upon our utmost patience and tenderest charity what are you going to do about it is the question of today it was asked once of our city in taunting defiance by a band of political cutthroats the legitimate outgrowth of life on the tenement house level law and order found the answer then and prevailed with our enormously swelling population held in this galling bondage will that answer always be given it will depend on how fully the situation that prompted the challenge is grasped forty per cent of the distress among the poor said a recent official report is due to drunkenness but the first legislative committee ever appointed to probe this sore went deeper down and uncovered its roots the conclusion forced itself upon it that certain conditions and associations of human life and habitation are the prolific parents of corresponding habits and morals and it recommended the prevention of drunkenness by providing for every man a clean and comfortable home years after a sanitary inquiry brought to light the fact that more than one half of the tenements with two-thirds of their population were held by owners who made the keeping of them a business generally a speculation the owner was seeking a certain percentage on his outlay and that percentage very rarely fell below fifteen per cent and frequently exceeded thirty the complaint was universal among the tenants that they were entirely uncared for and that the only answer to their requests was to have the place put in order by repairs and necessary improvements was that they must pay their rent or leave the agent's instructions were simple but emphatic collect the rent in advance or failing eject the occupants upon such a stock grew this upas tree small wonder the fruit is bitter the remedy that shall be an effective answer to the coming appeal for justice must proceed from the public conscience neither legislation nor charity can cover the ground the greed of capital that wrought the evil must itself undo it as far as it can now be undone homes must be built for the working masses by those who employ their labor but tenements must cease to be good property in the old heartless sense philanthropy in five per cent is the penance exacted if this is true from a purely economic point of view what then of the outlook from the christian standpoint not long ago a great meeting was held in this city of all denominations of a religious faith to discuss the question how to lay hold of these teeming masses in the tenements with christian influences to which they are now too often strangers might not the conference have found in the warning of one brooklyn builder who has invested his capital on this plan and made it pay more than money interests a hint worth heeding how shall the love of god be understood by those who have been nurtured in sight only of the greed of man